Alright, DW Berman here, and I just kind of wanted to show you how to take a movie from Lightwave, a stereoscopic movie from Lightwave, and get it onto YouTube. I'll probably skip the... Well, we'll see what we see. We'll see how much I do. Uh, here's a 3D scene I have in Lightwave, and if you go to your camera settings and click on Properties and go to the Stereo tab, you can turn stereoscopic rendering on and off. If you want to render in Lightwave with the Lightwave cameras and uh, render a stereoscopic 3D movie and put it on YouTube, you need to have the stereoscopic rendering checked on. And what this will do is this will actually render out the image twice. It'll render out an uh, image for the left eye and then the right eye, and uh, when you save it, it'll render it out. Two, two separate image sequences. Like if, you, if I go to the output tab here, you can see I have a file name set to save, and it's uh, 3D test underscore lightwave stereo, and then the number and then file name. However, if I actually go to the file, like I have loaded in After Effects here, you can see I actually have 3D test lightwave stereo left and right. So I have two separate channels. So it's actually saved two separate images. So the first thing I'll show you is how to set this up in After Effects. It's uh, pretty easy. Uh, when you import your footage, you want to make sure you. Uh, interpret your footage and set the correct frame rate interpret footage there you go you can right click on these to set it uh, take one of them grab it down here it's the little uh, film frame there and that'll make a new composition and drag your other one into that as well select both of them hit S to scale and there may be an, an easier way to do this but this way is pretty easy so you just want to scale both of them in the width, making sure you unlock the uh, the locks there. So grab the left one and just kind of slide it to the left. Hold down uh, Control Shift Alt to snap it to the edge. Uh, I guess that would be Command Shift Option on the Mac, and move the right one to the right, and then you know you are actually ready to render it out, make a movie in however you normally do it. But I also want to show you how to do this in Lightwave. Um, it's a little more complicated, but not everyone out there has After Effects. So let me clear this scene. Shift N to make a new scene. Just clear. I want to set my camera up to the correct setting. So I want to go to the, in this case, uh, 1280 by 720. And I'm going to add my image sequences now. I'm going to go to the image editor. I'm going to load the stereo one. I mean the left channel, and I'm going to come down here and find the right channel. I'm watching for when these letters here change, so the right channel. And I'm actually going to select, uh, set, set my uh, image type to sequence on both of these. Let me select both of these, and now change my frame rate. And with both of them selected, did it actually change? Yes, they are the same. Um, on one of these, I'm just going to clone it. I'm just going to hit uh, duplicate, I guess. And uh, that looks odd, but that's okay because this is just pretty much a, a dummy channel anyway. Gonna first thing I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you how to set this up so you can render out a background image. Uh, let me come over here. I'm just going to hit the D key, letter D. That opens up my display preferences, and I'm going to set my camera view to background image. Now I don't have a background image set, so I'm going to do that next. Windows, down to compositing options, or control F7, and I set my background image to this one that has a plus. This is the duplicate clone that I made of that image. And there we see it. It's washed out and ugly, but that's okay. Like I said, it's a dummy. Um, now I'm going to click on the dummy, go to the processing tab, add filter, and if you scroll way down at the bottom, it's off your screen, scroll way down to, toward the bottom, there's a textured filter, and you want to select textured filter. So now, double click that, and click on the texture button, and I'm going to add a layer, and it's going to be a procedural. This is just to see what's going on. I'm just going to make it an ugly color so I can obviously see that something is going on. Um, see, I'll add an image layer. There actually was one in there, I, but uh, so I dragged it to the top. So, image map, set the layer type to image map, projection, is planar. I want to pick the left image sequence, not the one with the plus, just a regular one, the left image sequence. I'm going to set the width tile 
to reset. And I'll set the height tile to reset as well. Leave pixel blending on because we're going to squish the image down and if pixel blending is off it's going to be all jaggedy. Um, scale, I want to change the scale to 0.5 on the ver vertical, or the horizontal rather, on the width. And coming over here to position, I'm going to do negative 0.25 and that'll push it over to the left side. I'm going to copy this layer copy, select the layer, paste, add to layers, paste, add to layers, hello, copy selected layers, paste, add to layers, okay. Uh, now instead of the left image, I want this to be the right image sequence, and I'm going to position this positive 250 millimeters. So there we have it, we can see left and right. The reason I threw in this uh, value here as you notice that even if I set the even with the edge set to reset if I uncheck this value it'll show what's beneath it in this case it was okay but I used an instance before instead of a duplicate and it was just kinda repeating the edge so you really don't need this uh, other one if as long as your scaling and positioning are accurate you're good to go so anyway um, let me hit O to make sure my timeline is actually set to the frames per second I want, in which case I want 24, so it stretches it out a bit. Um, so again, that was O for options and then frames per second. It's on the general preferences tab. So now if I hit F9, you'll see I have my side-by-side -side view. So now I'm going to render this out as a movie file or a AVI file, one of the two. And let's see if I need to go to my output options and save animation. Oh, I need to name it 3D test lightwave stereo. And I'll put it out there. So. Oops, I just went into the folder. I hate it when that happens. Okay. Lightwave 3D test. Okay, and save the image type. Um, in this case, I'll just do AVI. If you're on a Mac, you can do uh, MOV file. In this case, I will just do uh, XVID, and I'll just use that setting and hit OK and need to set my render out to 240 because I have 240 frames and then hit F10 and no I don't want to set the slider to 120 and there it is it's actually squeezing the two images together and rendering them out and into an AVI file so this will cook for a while. It shouldn't take too long because it's about a second per frame. So, but you don't want me talking here for five minutes. So I'll pause it till the end. So the render is done, and even though it looked like it was going to be a weirdly letterbox thing in the preview render, uh, it actually rendered out perfectly normal. So this is what the rendered output looks like if you're going to send something to uh, YouTube. They want a side by side, and uh, that's what we gave them. So let's upload this to YouTube. Um, let me open up my YouTube uh, channel and click upload. Select files from my computer and of course I could just drag it on but I made this window huge accidentally and now I can't see the rest of it. So uh, miscellaneous projects and render and There we go. And uh, let's upload it. Uh, when you're uploading, if you go to the advanced setting, you can set it here. 3D video. Say this video is already in 3D, side by side, left view on the left side. Now you could do uh, right video on the left side or top to bottom, but uh, yeah, I think probably the straightforward thing would be a left video on the left side. And did not recognize the audio because there was no audio. So. 
uh, yeah, and then just set your normal settings as you normally would, and uh, hit, just save it and publish it. So there you go. That is the basics for. Well, let me pause it, and when this is done processing, well, I think it is done processing. Okay, so here's your video on YouTube. Isn't that fantastic? So it's actually you can see that the I put it up as a side by side, and YouTube is showing it automatically as a uh, anaglyph. And of course, you can change your stereo settings here. What kind of color glasses do you have? Uh, you can change the type of viewing method. Like if you have a TV that shows 3D, you can uh, change the settings to something that your TV can understand. So we have uh, we can set uh, side by side, you can set interleave, no glasses, and so yeah, there are a few options you can set for doing stereoscopic 3D from within After Effects, or from within YouTube. So yeah, that's the end of the video. I hope it was helpful, and uh, have fun light waving in 3D.